Hello and welcome to Bloomington Today. I'm Judy Sky Voss, and this is the buzz for the week of August 29th through September 4th. Summer is drawing to a close and here at Normandale Lake, the water is also being drawn down. I'm here with Steve Gurney, the water resources specialist for the city of Bloomington to find out more about this project on the drawdown of the lake. Tell us where we're at with this project. Well, we started drawing down the water on, on Tuesday with uh, the pumps. We fired up the pumps and they're putting a berm over in the inlet channel uh, south of 84th Street. And that's gonna hold the water back in the wetlands on the, on the north side of 84th Street. So Steve, remind folks why we're doing this project. Well, we're doing this for a number of reasons. The main reason is it's going to in, uh, increase the vegetative diversity of, of the lake. Um, we're going to try to kill out the curly leaf pondweed, which is the big invasive species that starts to grow quickest in the summer and dies first. So it adds a lot of extra nutrients to the water, which we don't want. So we're going to eliminate that as best we can. It's going to take five years to do it. Um, the first year we're going to draw things down, freeze out the seeds, and then come back in the spring and do some spot treatments with, with a aquatic herbicide that's geared right towards the curly leaf pondweed. The uh, watershed district is going to be doing a lot of surveys of the plant vegetation that's in the lake bed. They've done some the past couple years as a baseline, we're gonna see what changes, what gets better, and, and um, that'll help us figure out how, how effective the treatments are for the curly leaf pondweed. So Steve, what should people expect to see happening here in the fall and into the winter? Well, they'll see, they'll see the water level draw down and you'll start to see the mud flats be exposed throughout the lake bed. How much water is it all going out? We're going to draw the lake down about three or four feet. And what we're doing is we're pumping that water over the spillway and into the creek where it would go naturally anyway. And it'll look like most of the lake will look like it's dried up. It really isn't dried up because all of that muck has a lot of water content to it. And so it acts like quicksand. So we're also telling people, as tempting as it might be to get out and look around on the lake bed, do not go out there. Um, we just don't know exactly how things are going to freeze up over the winter and it could be dangerous. The DNR has weighed in on, on our plan for, for management of wildlife. Uh, we've got turtle fence around the whole lake to direct the turtles to the proper crossings where we want them crossing so they're not climbing out on the roads and, and getting hit by cars or causing accidents. Well, thank you for taking the time to meet with us today and, and good luck with the project. Well, thank you. Now, from Normandale Lake, to Normandale Community College, where plans are underway for a celebration that was a half a century in the making. On September 23rd, 2018, it will be 50 years since Normandale Community College opened its doors in 1968. Since then, over 300,000 students have taken the opportunity to pursue their goals of higher education at Normandale. From the beginning, Normandale's purpose has been to provide excellent academic preparation and reasonable tuition as an alternative to four-year colleges. Through the years, it has become so much more to the students it serves, a pathway to a better life and a community of learners empowered by possibilities. Today, Normandale is the largest two-year college in the state of Minnesota. And in celebration of Normandale's 50 years, there will be two major events. The first will be an open house event on Saturday, September 22nd. This event will feature a magical history tour, a pop-up museum timeline, historical photos and banners included selected 1968 pieces loaned to Normandale by the Minnesota History Center. On Monday, September 24th, there will be a campus celebration featuring musical entertainment, food trucks, student performances, comments from students past and present, and games and prizes, along with a 50th anniversary themed contest. There will be many other events for the 50th anniversary. To get more information, go to normandale.edu backslash celebrate 50. Election season continues to heat up as we inch closer to election day on November 6th. 
and the city of Bloomington is in search for election judges. Here's some information you'll need to know if you want to be an election judge. First, you must be eligible to vote in Minnesota. You must also be able to read, write, and speak English. You do not need to declare which major political party you align with, but the state law does call for party balance among working judges at the polls. To reach this balance, the city clerk's office needs all judges and specifically needs those who affiliate with the Republican Party. And did you know that state law requires employers to excuse employees who are election judges from work with no loss of pay? Here in Bloomington, judges earn $11.25 an hour for training and judging. Two mandatory training classes will occur in October and work on election day starts at 6 a.m. and goes approximately to 10 p.m. Prospective judges can download an application form from Bloomington's website or call 952-563-8729 to have one mailed out to you. The dog days of summer may be done, but the work of Bloomington's newest canine duo is heating up. We caught up with these officers inside Bloomington's City Council Chambers for a demonstration. Blue weighs 74 pounds. I haven't, I don't know exactly how fast he can run, but they say between 30 and 40 miles an hour these dogs can run. So if you can imagine um, getting hit with 74 pounds at 30 some miles an hour, that's a pretty good way to get, to stop running <laughs> and probably end up on the ground. It was a meet and greet with Bloomington Police Department's newest K-9 team. Officer Kuzman and K-9 Blue were welcomed by Bloomington Chamber of Commerce members and city staff during the Chamber's Business Matters Safety Matters program. With some Q&A and an outdoor demonstration, those present learned quickly of the bond between this duo both on and off the job. What's his home life like around your place? Oh, oh it's great. we got three boys. Uh, between the ages of uh, 16 and 8, and he's just great with kids. And you know, when I go camping, he he comes with, and he just loves cabin life, that sort of thing. So he he he's just as good at vacationing as he is at work. Working with a canine like Blue was something Officer Kuzman had always been interested in. And this opening came up, and I actually talked to my wife about it. She's like, "Well, why wouldn't you do that?" Because I've always wanted to to be a a keen eye handler, I just never, never really thought it would happen for me. But I did the interviews and got selected, and shortly after that, they had the, the dog uh, at my house. <laughs> and an untrained Belgian Malinois <laughs> at, at your house, I mean, it was quite an experience until you got a little obedience. Canine Blue has come a long way already in his training thanks to hard work, a great handler, and some tasty encouragement. The Blue just picks up on things really quickly. And uh, Previously in the police world, they used a lot of compulsion, which is basically forcing them to do things. Now all of our methods are, are having to do with food-based rewards. He eats about five cups of Royal Canine every day. He never, I can't think of any times in training that he ever missed eating a day because he always wanted to, to get that food reward. It was such a strong drive for him to get, get to eat. Officer Kuzman and Blue will be going to more schooling this fall to get their bomb detection certification. And that is the buzz for the week of August 29th through September 4th. If you would like to watch other stories from the show, go to this week's playlist. There you'll find an interview with Bloomington's retiring parks and rec manager, Randy Qualley, Inclusion and equity is one of the City Council's six strategic priorities. Hear how Diversity Day is just one effort in reaching city goals. Thanks for watching.